Hello everyone, my name is Lori Bradner with the Florida Aviation Network, and we are here at the Sebring, the terminal building at the Sebring Regional Airport. We are broadcasting live and in the clear with the Florida Aviation Network, and we're celebrating 14 years of the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. We have an absolutely gorgeous day with very light winds today, and I am here with Chris Lord, but really better known as the gyroplane guy. How are you, Chris? Very We're good. so Thank glad you. that Thanks you're here. here today. And I have to ask you, um, you're the gyroplane guy. <laughs> Tell me about this. This uh, you're, you're in a great place. We're yep. flying into the future. Yep. Gyroplanes are definitely in the future. Absolutely. Um, talk to me. How did you get into gyroplanes? And uh, well, that's actu awesome. Actually, uh, I I got into gyroplanes from LIDAR, so the mobile okay. scanning, they were doing that in South Africa, and I thought, wow, that sounds really neat. I was already a powered parachute guy, airplane guy, and then uh, our distributor for powered parachutes said, hey, you got to come check out these gyroplanes. I'm like, no way. <laughs> I've seen those things. I don't want to be around them. And he's like, no, no, it's totally different. Okay. So I went and flew one, and I was hooked right then. So really? So added on my CFI rating, and from there, it was just history. Started training right away, started traveling everywhere, had the opportunity to fly a lot of different types, and it was just addictive at that point. That's awesome. Now, how long have you actually been uh, in aviation? Only, only uh, well, aviation since 98 I started with powered parachutes okay. uh, before that I was able to refuel planes and do some other stuff for the neighbors which was awesome you know always had the bug but just never had the means to do it now how did you uh, tell me the transition how you went from really not wanting to do gyroplanes which yeah. I think is absolutely hysterical and you went from really not wanting to try them and now you're the gyroplane guy <laughs> tell me about that transition yeah. and, and what do you do now uh, well I guess it all started when when I first started flying it was a misunderstood thing you know we we heard about jar planes it sounded like they weren't really safe and right. people were falling out of the sky or, or there's just all these moving parts and right. and then once we started to fly we're like wait a second this is this is not what they keep saying and then uh, after time it just it appears that you can fly in almost any kind of wind we traveled cross country oh. from Los Angeles to here and back and all over the place so it really opened the eyes to what the next generation of gyroplanes are so awesome. with that being able to fly uh, okay. I was adventurous to try all the different types of gyroplanes okay we have the first generation gyroplanes which are kind of the older style models and okay. then they had the first generation certified gyroplanes which were jump takeoff and uh, some higher speed ones like the Carter Copter. I was a test pilot for as well. Really? And then everything in between. But most recently, it's been the European models okay. that most people fly. So okay. uh, every time I would get a call, I had my first company was called Picteo Aerospace. People are like, what the heck <laughs> is that? And they said, oh, yeah, that gyroplane guy. So I would answer my phone calls like, hey, this is Chris, the gyroplane guy. And they're like, oh, yeah, that gyroplane guy. We know you. So it just kind of stuck. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Now, yeah. one of the things uh, you just mentioned offhand, mm -hmm. and I know we were talking, uh, CFI. Yep. Um, talk to me a little bit about your background, because one of the things, um, I know that you're based here, correct, yep, Chris? Absolutely. So you Sebring. are based here, and we actually had an opportunity uh, to speak with some of the guests with the PAL V, yeah. which is a flying wow, car. Exciting. And one of the things that is absolutely necessary is you've yep. got to have a gyroplane license to fly those. And I know that you're partnering with them so that you can educate people and get them the license. But you mentioned something about basically going from zero to hero. Yep. Tell me about your background and what can you do for people here? Yeah, for the gyroplane industry, we can go from a pilot that's never flown anything all the way to the highest mm -hmm. level. We've been training the FAA in gyroplanes because it's still slightly unknown throughout the network okay. uh, for the past four years. So. Uh, they come to us for training as well here in Sebring. Really? Um, we can fly basically any gyroplane, so we can do the sport pilot level, the private pilot, the mm -hmm. add-on, the commercial, the CFI, sport CFI, or anything above. And you do it all? Yes. Yep. I'm one of the very few examiners in the U.S., so very fortunate to be able to do anything here. Amazing. And right mm -hmm. here in Sebring. Right Se here in Sebring. Bring Florida. Yep. Yep. Wow. Now, that is amazing. Now, um, talk to me a little bit. Um, I know that you're here in Sebring, but you also do, obviously, you've got background in sales. You've got yep. background in manufacturing, background in assembly. Talk to me a little bit about that and what you can also offer all the individuals, which sure. is we've got all types here from 2 to 92. Yep. Um, what else do you offer? Yeah, uh, well, we do sales, but in the gyroplane industry, they're all experimental amateur builds, so we okay. have to build those. Uh, so this past year, we've done 18 gyroplanes. It uh -huh. takes about three weeks to do the 51% build. 
do the certification, we can do the fly off for the hours. So if you have that passion, we can set mm -hmm. you up and make sure it's your dream. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, where are you located here? If people, uh, we've got a lot of people, we're broadcasting live, <laughs> and we've got people all over the world that are watching the sure, gyroplane sure. guy, so if you get calls from all over the world, <laughs> you know, this is the gyroplane guy. Yeah. Um, but where can they find you here at Sebring? Uh, right here at Sebring at the commercial hangars. If you just go to gyroplaneguy.com, you can look at our uh, website there, and it shows our address, but we have a commercial hangar right here on the airport field. That's amazing. Now, mm -hmm. the really the theme this year mm -hmm. uh we had an opportunity to stock talk with beverly glarner sure. is flying into the future yeah. talk to me um i know i met your lovely daughter and your wife <laughs> um talk to me about what you think about the future of aviation and gyroplanes and where do they fit in uh well the gyroplanes were a little bit of an unknown factor until mm -hmm. the europeans kind of started bringing that up so okay. in europe they were actually selling more gyroplanes than airplanes and in really? the u.s there was a lack of instructors which were all kind of banding together okay. to bring that in so this past year has been our biggest year yet for gyroplanes and more okay. and more people are starting to see that these are truly capable aircraft we have speeds in the 100 to 120 mile range, 400 nautical mile distance. Uh, as you could see yesterday and some of the other days, we can handle winds. Uh, it was gusting to 50 yesterday and we were still flying. Really? So I, I knew I was amazing. out. Yes, I was actually out. And the, yeah. you could tell by looking at the wind socks. Yeah, that the so winds. most of our customers are transition people that okay. really uh, enjoy flying, but they don't care for the turbulence. And that's what the gyroplane offers the best. Really? The mm -hmm. stability? The stability and the turbulence. The rotor system absorbs almost anything so we have the ability to fly when we want to fly okay as opposed to worrying about midday thermals or high winds or right. crosswinds and that kind of stuff so it brings that joy back in our, our best sales tool is get the wife in the back seat on a turbulent day and it's a done deal now <laughs> i have to ask you uh -huh. does your wife fly uh she flies with me all my kids fly with me really? and stuff, but yeah she's usually busy doing the back end stuff okay <laughs> oh, well, and that's that's what we do yep. exactly yeah. now yeah. if someone is not able to get here and we do have individuals that you know um is certain they're just not able to get here to see bring at yep. least um, today or for the expo how can they get in touch with you I mean you are just extraordinary <laughs> you're a joy to talk with well, um, they just need to call you and talk to the gyroplane uh, guy because you're so cool yeah. um, but how can they get in touch with you uh, just Chris? go to gyroplaneguy.com or Chris at gyroplaneguy.com and we'll okay. get back with you that's awesome and now you you talked a little bit just quickly about other instructors is yeah. that is where are you now as far as growing that population? Yeah, I would say the amount of instructors has actually doubled in the last year. So really? uh, the amount of gyroplanes, it's, uh, to be able to sell 18 in a year is tremendous. I mean, we didn't even think that was possible. And all the other industries are growing the same way with us. So I, I think the aviation community is actually growing quite yeah. well, and, and gyroplanes are right along with it. So That's it. It's, it's and awesome. They're the future. Well, Chris, I can't thank you enough. Um, gyroplane <laughs> guy, it was so <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. I got to see you outside the studio, and it's honored to have Great. you here. My name is Lori Bradner. I'm with the Florida Aviation Network. We're uh, celebrating 14 years of the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo right here at Sebring Regional Airport. We look forward to seeing you here.